Yo, what's up guys hope you guys are doing good. So today we are going to see what if Naruto and Sakura met Luffy and his team on River Mission Part 1. Hope you will enjoy this video so before we start please like the video and subscribe to our channel and hit bell notification it motivates me to upload more fanfics for my lovely audience. So let's get started. Alright, exclaimed Naruto Uzumaki, a lively blonde ninja. He was met with a warm giggle from his friend Sakura Haruno. Just a week ago, they had successfully saved their friend Gara from the clutches of the evil Atasuki and now they were making their way back to the Hidden Leaf Village. Their next stop was to rest and meet with the Hokage. So, Sakura, what do you think about going on a date after our mission? Naruto asked, hopeful. Sakura rolled her eyes and shook her head. Oh. Naruto, you're such a knucklehead. She saw the pleading look in his eyes and let out a sigh of resignation. Fine, Naruto, but only if you're paying, she reluctantly agreed. Naruto pumped his fist in excitement as they approached the Hokage Mountain. They knocked on the door and waited until they heard a voice from inside. Come in. The two teammates entered the room to find Lady Tsunade, the Hokage, standing with her arms crossed and her eyes closed. Shizune stood beside her. Tsunade opened her eyes and faced Naruto and Sakura. Naruto, Sakura, I called you here because I have another mission for you. You are to retrieve a forbidden ninja scroll known as the Scroll of the Sage of Six Paths. Where can we find it? Sakura inquired. It is located at sea, specifically in the Yukio River. Tsunade pointed to the location on a map. Sakura examined it closely. I've heard of it, but I've also heard that strange things happen there. Indeed, Sakura, Tsunade confirmed. You must exercise caution. I've heard of many terrible incidents occurring in that area. Understood, Lady Tsunade. We will retrieve the scroll and bring it back here. Good. Now leave my sight. I have work to attend to. Tsunade reached for a bottle of sake and a glass, signaling the end of the conversation. Naruto and Sakura exchanged knowing glances, rolled their eyes, and exited the room. Shizune looked at Tsunade with concern as she poured herself a glass and took a sip. Lady Tsunade, do you think it's wise for them to retrieve the scroll from there? Shizune didn't get an answer because Suand was still drinking. You know about the rumors of that river. What if they don't make it back? Shizune's words were cut off as Tsunade placed her glass down. You don't need to worry about them, Shizune, even if the rumors are true, they'll find their way back home. I just know it. Shizune looks down in worry. After a long day of walking, Naruto and Sakura finally arrived at the Yukio River. Exhausted, they decided to take a break and rest for an hour. As Naruto sat on the docks, he gazed up at the sky. Concerned, Sakura turned to him and approached him. Naruto, were you planning on telling me about the nine tails inside you? Naruto let out a sigh and turned away from her. It's a complicated situation, Sakura, he replied. He then turned his head back towards her. I did intend to tell you, but I was afraid that you would, hate me. Sakura gasped upon hearing those words. Naruto, she whispered, tears welling up in her eyes. I don't blame you for not telling me, but we're a team, you could have confided in me and Sasuke. Just the mention of Sasuke's name made her feel uneasy, but she quickly shook off the feeling. You weren't planning on telling me, even though you trusted me. You weren't going to share it with your friends. I would have understood. I wouldn't have to feel guilty about rejecting you, Sakura said, her voice filled with disappointment. Naruto growled and turned away once again. It's none of your business, he muttered. Sakura's tears continued to flow as she sniffled. How could you say that? You're my friend, my teammate. Of course, it's my business. I would trust you more than anyone else. Do you really think I would see you as the Nine Tails? You're not. You're Naruto Uzumaki, the future Hokage. And I will always stand by your side, no matter what. Naruto put his head up to see a teary but smiling Sakura. He smiled and embraced her. Thank you, Sakura, you are correct. I apologize. 
They both exchanged smiles as the boat suddenly jolted. What is happening? Naruto questioned, peering ahead to identify the cause of the disturbance. However, there was nothing visible. Naruto shrugged, suggesting, perhaps it was a minor earthquake. Yet, before he could fully relax, the boat shook once more. Sakura stood up, almost stumbling, but Naruto swiftly caught her, preventing her from falling. She expressed her gratitude with a smile. Thank you, Naruto. He returned the smile, but soon noticed something peculiar unfolding before them, a vortex that was pulling them in. The water began to transform from its usual blue hue to a vivid red. Sakura hurried towards the steering wheel, attempting to steer away from the vortex, while Naruto clung tightly to his seat. Ah, Sakura, get us out of here, he pleaded. Sakura struggled to maneuver the boat against the powerful current, but their efforts were in vain as the boat eventually succumbed to the force. Naruto held onto his pink-haired comrade. Sakura, if we do not survive, there is something I must confess to you. He shouted amidst the chaos of the ship falling apart. What? Sakura exclaimed. Naruto swallowed nervously, realizing that now was the time to reveal his secret. Do you remember when you called me annoying on the day we first met? He inquired. Sakura nodded, feeling remorseful for her past words. And do you recall when Sasuke approached you and complimented your forehead? Sakura's eyes widened in surprise. H. How did you know about that? She questioned. Because. Naruto lowered his eyebrows and offered a faint smile. I was the one pretending to be Sasuke. Sakura could hardly believe what she was hearing. However, before she could react further, the ship continued to crumble. Piece by piece, the floor gave way. Suddenly, Naruto and Sakura were forcefully separated. Naruto reached out for Sakura. Sakura. He cried out, just as he was pulled into a portal, while Sakura found herself on the other side, leaving behind their headbands. Wealth, fame, power. Gold Roger, the king of pirates, attained this and everything else the world had to offer and his dying words drove countless souls to the seas. You want my treasure. You can have it. I left everything I gathered in one place. Now, you just have to find it. These words lured men to the grand line in pursuit of dreams greater than they've ever dared to imagine. This is the time known as the Great Pirate Era. Three individuals are unwinding inside a small. Among them is a young boy sporting a pirate hat made of straw. He exudes an air of exhilaration as he scampers around the boat, yet his enthusiasm is dampened by the absence of any sight of land. Accompanying him is his newfound companion, Sanji, who is smoking while sitting on a crate groaning and Yosaku a former. You need to sit down. He said. You need to sit, Luffy. Sanji shouted growing annoyed and irritated by the captain's antics. You're starting to bug me. Sorry, I'm just excited that we finally got a cook on board. Now, we just need Nami. Sanji sighs and touched his face. Ah, Nami I could sit around all day and think about how beautiful she is. She sighed dreamily. I can't wait to see her again. A bright light appeared. Both Luffy and Yosaku looked up. Luffy shields his face on top of his hat. Hey, was that a star? Yosaku and Sanji lowered their eyes to get a closer look. They see it's not a shooting star but some blonde kid falling down. No, it's not you idiot, it's some kid coming towards us. Sanji said. Oh, Luffy said. Yosaku and Sanji widened their eyes. Coming down, they both exclaimed. Yosaku hurriedly made his way to the deck, attempting to steer the ship away, while Sanji protected the crate. Luffy, on the other hand, simply stood there, transfixed. Sanji approached him. Luffy, move out of the way. Sanji warned, his voice filled with concern. He glanced upwards and gasped as the boy landed on Luffy's body. Both boys were left feeling disoriented and dizzy. Thank you for this award. The blonde haired before he fainted. Luffy just stood there with a confused look while Yosaku was shaking with shock. Luffy looked back at the blonde boy again. Who the hell is this guy? Naruto was at Hokage Mountain. 
Naruto Uzumaki, the sixth Hokage of the Hidden Leaf is lying down. He then feels someone covering his eyes. Guess who? A familiar voice asked him. Naruto pretended to play dumb. It's certainly not my beautiful wife, isn't it? He hears her giggle then she lies down. Well, the kids are out training and we have this all to ourselves. She smirked sexily as she leaned closer on top of her husband. Is that so? He smirked. He lets her lean closer and they puckered their lips. Naruto's eyes flickered open. He slowly turns to see some guy in some kind puckering his lips. Ah. He backed away and shivered. What the hell, man? You were giving me the smacks. Hey. Watch your tone. We just saved your life after you falling on our boat. Naruto's expression changed from anger to confusion. Boat. He questioned. He looks up at a boy with a straw hat and scar. The blonde haired haired wearing a blue collared shirt who almost gave him CPR. And a man with a green shirt and red headband. Naruto started at them and looks around for something. His eyes widen. Where is she? He grabs the boy with the straw hat and shakes him. Where did she go? Who? The guy with the cigarette asked. Sakura. Where is she? She has pink hair, green eyes, and wearing a headband like me. They all looked at his head in confusion. Naruto touched his head and felt nothing. He widened his eyes. Oh, no. Where is my headband? He asked manically. It's important to me. Hey, relax, said the man with the handband. Don't tell me to relax. I lost my headband. And I don't know where Sakura is and where I am. How the hell can I calm down? Whack. Naruto felt a punch from Luffy, causing him to fall. He looked up and growled. Why did you hit me? Cause I felt like it. Luffy answered. Now, did you say your friend is missing? Yeah, Naruto said. Her name is Sakura, and I don't know where she is. Is Sakura, beautiful? Sanji asked dreamily. Naruto glared at him. Yes. Well, maybe she is at the Grand Line. We are looking for our friend Nami. Really? Which village are you guys from? The sand village. Sand. Who would want to live in sand? It's coarse, rough, irritating and it gets everywhere. Sanji said. They all looked at him with disgust. What? He asked. Sanji, that is the stupidest thing I ever heard. Luffy exclaimed. Naruto shook his head. What is the grand line? You guys were mentioning you were going there. What is it? The three boys' faces fell. You serious? Sanji asked. You don't know what the Grand Line is. You are sailing the oceans and you don't know what it is. Hey. I don't know everywhere in the Land of Fire. Land of Fire? Luffy asked. What the hell is that? Now hearing that confuses Naruto even more. W what? He stuttered. What the do you mean? It's the country we live in. It must be some kind of faraway land. Yosaku said. Tell me how did you get here? Maybe it can give us to help you find your friend. Naruto sighed and told them their mission. After Naruto finished his explanation, the three boys' jaw dropped. You mean you came down here after coming down on a huge whirlpool? Naruto nodded. Yeah, pretty much. Sanji crossed his arms and picked up his cigarettes and lights up. I guess it's not gonna be the weirdest thing I ever heard. Ah. Uh. Sakura let out a weary sigh as she washed her hands, still feeling the adrenaline from saving a patient who had almost succumbed to a heart attack. Just as she finished, she heard the sound of her window opening. Quickly turning off the faucet, she hurried back outside, only to find no one there. A mischievous smirk formed on her face as she crossed her arms. Not to her surprise, she then turned her head and saw her husband, the renowned blonde knucklehead, sitting on her chair. Ah, so you decided to take a break, Lord Hokage, she remarked playfully. He grinned back at her. Well, the old farts were having a dreadfully dull meeting, so I thought I'd pay a visit to the most beautiful doctor in the world. Sakura blushed and settled herself on his lap. Flattery won't get you far, at least not yet, she teased, leaning in to give her husband a tender kiss. Sakura's eyes fluttered open, and as she gazed at the sky above, a faint blush colored her cheeks. The remnants of her dream still lingered in her mind, 
causing a brief smile to grace her lips. However, her tranquil moment was abruptly interrupted as she turned around and found herself standing in what appeared to be a tropical village. Towering before her was a mysterious tower, and nearby, a pool shimmered invitingly. Confusion clouded Sakura's thoughts as she questioned her surroundings. W where am I? She reached up to touch her head, only to realize that her headband was missing. A wave of worry washed over her as she recalled what had transpired, and she anxiously glanced behind her. Naruto, where are you? She called out, her voice filled with concern. Suddenly, the sound of a door opening caught her attention, causing her to whirl around in fear. Her widened eyes beheld a group of creatures emerging from the building, all of them muscular resembling shark men. Among them was a light blue shark donning a yellow cabana shirt, and a blue-skinned, smelt whiting shark with thick lips. Sakura couldn't shake off the feeling that these individuals were far from friendly, regardless of their appearance. This girl fell from the sky not too long ago, Arlong, sneered the leader, who introduced himself as Arlong. Approaching Sakura, he studied her with a stroke of his chin, a sinister grin spreading across his face. Well, it seems we've acquired ourselves another slave, he chuckled, his words sending a chill down Sakura's spine. Horror etched across her features, she mustered the courage to ask. Who are you? Her voice trembled with fear. The fish man chuckled evilly. Just say if you cooperate if you do what I say. I might even let you live. He chuckled evilly. Sakura was surprised with his appearance before she stood up. She cracked her knuckles and gave the shark man a cold glare. I will kick your ass. Sakura declared with confidence. The shark scoffed at her words, finding them amusing. However, Sakura's smirk grew wider as she channeled her chakra, preparing to deliver a powerful blow that would send the shark man flying into his own pool. Is that all you've got, fish breath? Her expression quickly changed when she witnessed the shark man standing back up, seemingly unaffected by her punch. He adjusted his crooked nose, which Sakura had just straightened with her attack. It was as if her strike had no impact at all. Suddenly, he armed himself with blades and aimed them at Sakura. You've got some spirit, girl. I like it. You could be a valuable asset to my army, Arlong remarked, swinging his blade towards Sakura. Swiftly, she evaded the attack, dodging it just in time. Taking advantage of the opportunity, Sakura leapt into the air and delivered a powerful kick infused with her chakra sending Arlong crashing to the ground. Determined to finish him off, she landed in front of him, ready to strike a final blow. However, a sense of unease washed over her. She attempted to replenish her chakra, only to realize that she was running dangerously low. In that moment, she heard the shark man chuckle. Don't worry, this won't kill you, but it will hurt, he taunted. Sakura desperately tried to evade, but it was too late. With a single punch, the shark man knocked her down, causing her eyes to close shut. Naruto. Meanwhile, a girl with bright orange hair wearing a green top and black pants carrying a bag. She is looking back at the sea with sadness. Then she looks at the tower she is about to enter. Her name is Nami. Hey, you get out of the way. Her voice calls out to her. He turns around to see a little boy holding a toy sword. Arlong's going to die today. He killed my daddy, so now I'm gonna have to kill him. He cried. Nami gives the boy a sympathetic look. So move, or I'm gonna have to kill you too. As the child lay sprawled on the ground, Nami swiftly retrieved her three-piece staff from within her shirt and delivered a firm smack across his face. You should know that Arlong doesn't have time to deal with whimpering little punks like you. Nami declared as she puts away her staff. You're too young. Go home. She tossed a few bills towards the crying child. Take that with you and use it to keep yourself out of trouble, kid. Go to hell. The child spat out. After that encounter, Nami sees Arlong and his gang surrounding someone. He turns around and grins. So, Nami, you returned. I haven't seen you around here for quite a while. So, how did you do this time? Hey. Nami gave a short chuckle. 
Who are you talking to? You know, I just can't believe the world is so full of such blind idiots. Wanna see? She showed him the bag. Arlong chuckled evilly. Good work, now we have another surprise for you. Nami blinks in confusion. She looks down and widens. It is a girl with pink hair, wearing a red buttoned shirt and pink skirt. Believe it or not, this girl gave me a punch. Nami's eyes widen then looks down. But don't worry, she's still alive. I can use her for my army. Nami thinks to herself, a smug smile forming on her face. Take her to the dungeon, but make sure she has a nice room, Arlong says. Nami bends down to pick up the unconscious girl and carry her. She begins to walk slowly towards the dungeon, careful not to attract any attention from Arlong, she whispers. Once Arlong isn't looking, I'll set you free. Nami whispers to the girl, determination shining in her eyes. Meanwhile, back at sea, Naruto was sitting on the boat with Luffy and Yosaku while Sanji was cooking. Naruto told them about his adventures in the Leaf Village. Naruto told his new friend about his dream. Sanji came out with the food. Naruto asked for ramen, but Sanji told him there wasn't any, so Naruto took some meat. Not that he was complaining. It is pretty good. So you want to be Hokage, what is that? Luffy asked. Naruto took a bite of the meat and drank some water as he explained. The Hokage is like the leader of our village. He or she protects the village from villains. You see, it was my dream to become the Hokage. Really? Luffy asked. Naruto nodded. Yes, it's my dream to become Hokage. I'm one step closer to that. He put the plate on the table and raised his fists to look at the sky. Luffy smiled and joined him. Luffy said, I have the same dream as you. Naruto turned to him. Really? What is that? Naruto asked. Luffy grinned. Become the Pirate King. After saying that, Naruto's jaw dropped. No, way. The corner of his mouth turned into a smile. Are you a pirate? He asked. Luffy nodded. That's so cool, I'm a ninja. Really? Luffy asked. Yeah, and the Hokage is the greatest ninja and I am gonna be Hokage someday. That sounds like my dream. Luffy said. It's to be king of the pirates. King of the pirates? What's that? Naruto asked. He is the most famous pirate in the Grand Line. He holds the greatest treasure ever, the One Piece. Really? Naruto asked. Yep. Luffy said as he looked up at the sky. And I am gonna find it. Naruto looks at him with a smile. I hope you do, Luffy. You sound like me, committing to a goal. Meanwhile, Luffy's other crewmates Zoro, Usopp, and Johnny approached the Arlong Park compound to pursue Nami. Positioned between the sniper and bounty hunter, Zoro is seated against the bowsprit. That's Arlong Park ahead, announced Johnny who was sweating in fear. Usopp gulped. Arlong Park, huh, so this is the hideout of Arlong the fish pirate. He uttered nervously. I hope Nami's here. Johnny turns to Usopp. Big sis Nami's ship was the going merry. So before we do anything stupid, we should quietly check that it's stopped on this island first. Usopp nodded at Johnny's words. Yeah, good idea. Zoro, however, slammed his katana and flicked his blade. Let's attack, he declared, causing Usopp and Johnny's eyes to widen in fear. But I just said we shouldn't do anything stupid, exclaims Johnny. What? Attack. You idiot. We know nothing about this place. Usopp shouts. Yeah, these guys are the fishman. But Zoro wouldn't have any of it. While the rest of you are busy blabbering and wimping out, I'm placing my thoughts on the battle we're about to face. Luffy told me to bring her back and I'll do just that. Usopp and Johnny stared at each other before they knocked him down with hammers. They then tied him up with a rope on the ship's cabin. Usopp then uses his binoculars and was searching for the Mary. He turns left and then right as he spots it. Then she has to be on the island somewhere. We just have to find her. Johnny said. Zoro growls in anger as he. What do you think you're doing? Would you idiots untie me? I am not the enemy. But Johnny and Usopp ignore Zoro as they are looking at the map. We're east of Arlong Park here at Kokoyashi Village. But it's strange. 
Why would she have stopped so far from the village? Johnny wonders aloud. Untie me damn it, Zoro demanded. Usopp walks closer to him. Zoro, you're hurt way too bad to be of any help when we go ashore. He said as he touched his chest which was wounded and caused him to grunt in pain. Just sit tight and relax. It's okay. Rest up. You can help next time. He then stands up and makes a declaration. Fear not, gentlemen. Usopp bellows with pride. I will bring back the girl safely. He laughs. Johnny walked up behind with a sweet palm. Looks like, skipping Arlong Park has sure cheered you up. He stated. Prepare the anchor. Bring us alongside the going Mary. Usopp demanded. Aye, yes. Now that we're underway, it's time to give a name to this voyage. I think I shall call it, The Great Adventures of Captain Usopp. Usopp smiled, thinking he got away until he spotted a couple of fishmen. He crouches in fear. What did you see? Johnny asked. F fishman. Usopp trembles. Full speed ahead. Usopp orders softly. Okie doke. Johnny replies. Usopp and Johnny manage to sail past the fishmen guards, undetected. Why didn't we just dock right there? Zoro shouts. Shush. Both Usopp and Johnny hushed them, and then Usopp jumped in front of Zoro. There were three fishmen over there. It's Arlong's crew. We can't stop here right now. Zoro responded by kicking Usopp's face with both of his feet. Do not yell at me. He cried out. If there are fishmen here, this entire area must be under Arlong's control. So, what now? Usopp lets out a sigh and looks at Johnny. We could just say we couldn't find her. He suggested. Untie me now morons, come on. Zoro demanded. They see the fishman getting suspicious as two of them swam to shore causing Johnny and Usopp to freak. Let's run. Usopp suggested. Okay. Johnny agreed. They looked down to see the fishman getting close. They jumped down leaving Zoro behind. Once the two cowards left, Zoro's eyes were twitching. There's just this one guy. The blue fishman asked. Maybe he's just drifted here real far out or something. The dark skin said. I think we should take him to Arlong. Usopp and Johnny rose out and bowed their heads. Forgive me, Zoro. I will tell Luffy that you were courageous to the bitter end. Says Usopp. Johnny, however, was crying. Please forgive me, Zoro. I'll never forget you. Okay. Now let's find some land. Usopp said. Right. Johnny said as they swam ashore. After an hour, Nami scans her surroundings to ensure that she is not being observed. She diligently searches through the keys until she finds the correct one. Now, I truly wish I possessed a sword resembling a key that could unlock any door. However, who would be foolish enough to create such a thing? She mutters to herself as she opens the door. Inside, she notices that the girl with pink hair, who had been beaten by Arlong, is still unconscious. Nami approaches her cautiously and checks her pulse. Thankfully, she is still alive, and as if to confirm this, the girl's eyes begin to flutter open. W where am I? She stammers, turning to see a girl with vibrant orange hair and a tank top. Before she can inquire further, the orange-haired girl covers her mouth. Listen closely. This is Arlong's prison, and I am going to help you escape, she whispers. Now, I need you to close your eyes and hold your breath for a few minutes. I will stage your death so that you can get out. Blink once if you understand, blink twice if you do not. The girl blinks once. Excellent. Let's get you out of here. Nami declares. Oh, by the way, my name is Nami. The pink-haired girl responds with a smile. I'm Sakura. She introduces herself. Nami grins and quickly surveys the area spotting a fishman guard approaching. Hurry, close your eyes, she whispers urgently. Sakura obediently shuts her eyes and holds her breath. Nami lifts her onto her back and begins to walk away. The guard notices Nami carrying Sakura. He continues walking as Nami walks his the opposite direction. The fishman realizes that Nami is carrying their prisoner, and scrutinizes the situation. Halt! What are you doing with the prisoner? He questions. 
I am giving her a proper burial. You see, Arlong's attack was so devastating that it claimed her life. I am sending her off to the sea, Nami explains. The fishman guard eyes her suspiciously, taking a moment to sniff her. Nami starts to feel anxious, and she senses Sakura's nervousness as well. Eventually, the guard shrugs. Very well, I will inform Arlong later. Just make sure she is sent away, he concedes. With that, the guard departs. Nami breathes a sigh of relief, and Sakura mentally wipes away her sweat. Once they are safely outside of Arlong Park, she hands Sakura a blue hat and sunglasses. Here put these on. The fishman won't recognize you. Sakura smiles and puts on the hat. She made sure her forehead was all covered up. She puts on her sunglasses. She also gave her a blue cloak. Now, listen, head to my house. Find a girl named Nojiko who lives there. Once I am done with Arlong, I will help you get out of here. Sakura was about to ask but Nami cut her off. I'll explain later. Now go. Nami hands her a map. Sakura opens it. But wait why do you? She looks up to see Nami is gone. She quirked an eyebrow. Strange. She muttered. She reads the map and heads out to find Nokiko's house. She walked towards town while looking at the map. However when she looked at the town, she gasped at a horrifying sight. Oh, what happened? She asked. After escaping the fishman and leaving Zoro behind, Usopp and Johnny finally made it to land. I think this place is called Gosa Village. Johnny said as they found themselves on solid ground. Once they opened their eyes, their eyes widened in fear. The whole town looks deserted. No, more like destroyed. The houses and other buildings look like it was hit by a tornado. And the pathway looked cut in half. I heard Arlong came through here a few weeks back, Johnny said while feeling his body shake. Dot but I never thought that. Everything's upside down, Usopp said. I've heard people say that fishmen can be stronger than normal human beings by a very wide margin. I guess this is how strong you have to be to survive the Grand Line. Johnny said, not knowing that someone was walking towards him and Usopp. He looks ahead and screams while Usopp doesn't notice it or Johnny himself running away. Maybe. But even the street's upside down. Usopp mutters to himself. The monster, Momu, caused this destruction. The shadow that scared Johnny away told him. Monster, don't tell me this place has monsters. Usopp gulped. He belonged to a friend of Arlong's on the Grand Line. We brought him back here with us and have been looking after him for her ever since. From the Grand Line, huh? Usopp asked. He then finally realizes something's not right. Wait, we. He turns around and screams. It was the same fishman they saw that captured Zoro earlier. Hey, you were with that guy with the boat. Usopp screams and runs away. Later, he tells the fishman. He laughs as he feels confident that he is losing him. Not too far off, Sakura in disguise was looking at her map she then heard laughter. She looks over to see Usopp escaping. You may be a fishman but there is no way you can catch me on dry land. I'm a very fast runner. I'm a beautiful gazelle. He gloated until he felt somebody tripped him and fell. He looks up in annoyance only to see a little boy carrying a sword. Die, you stupid fishman. And now I'll avenge my father by killing you. He said as he aimed the sword at him. Usopp screams while Sakura tries to stop the boy but the boy feels a girl hitting his head with a karate chop. The girl had purple hair, wearing a red bandana a tank top, and jean shorts. Sakura was surprised and relieved that he didn't kill Usopp to see them there. Honestly, how many times do I have to tell you? The girl told him. It only took one person, who decided to stand up to them and they responded by slaughtering everyone in Gosa. She gives a closer look at Usopp then gives him a deadpan look. You look and smell like a fishman, but I can see that you're human, mostly human. Usopp's jaw dropped. Mostly. Excuse me. They looked behind to see a girl wearing a hat and sunglasses. I hate to bother you but are you all right? Who are? The girl was about to ask then they looked ahead to see the fishman chasing Usopp approaching. Sakura gulped in fear. 
A fishman, Chabo squeaks, fearfully. And this time it's for real. The purple-haired young woman says. Usopp stands up and walks over. All right, stand back and let me handle this one. The sniper takes out his weapon. Sakura took a look at it and she saw he had a unique weapon. A slingshot, really? She asked. Usopp ignored her as he readied his attach. Take this. It's my special attack. Lead star. But before he could shoot his sling, the purple-haired woman conked him on the head with a hammer. Sakura looked at Usopp in shock then back at the woman who hit him. I guess he wasn't listening to us when we said the fishmen would kill us if we messed with them, Simon, tough guy. She said. Sakura shakes it off and helps her move the long-nosed pirate of the way. Once they were out of distance, the woman turned to Sakura. Wait here, until the fishman's out of sight. Sakura nodded. The woman turns back and lets out a scream. Ah. The fishman turns to the woman's shrieks. What's wrong? A creepy-nosed guy. She said. Which way did he go? The younger woman points to her left. That way. The fishman nodded and took off to the direction she pointed. Now I gotcha. Sakura sighed with relief as the woman returned. Now, can you help me carry him back? She asked. Sakura nods and picks up Usopp's feet while the purple-haired woman carried his head. Back at the boat, Naruto was sitting on the deck, worried about Sakura while Luffy was inside. Yosaku leaned in and after a while, Sanji came out with their food and set it down. Luffy's mouth drooled, and then he remembered something. He turns to Naruto who is still standing up there. Hey, Naruto. The blonde-haired ninja turned around and saw Luffy having meat in his mouth. You hungry? He asked with his mouth full of meat. Naruto shook his head and then returned to looking up at the sky. I'm worried about Sakura. Ah, it's like I told you. He jumped close to him and touched his back. We'll find her. I know we will. Naruto said in a determined voice. It's just that we were gonna die and I told her how I feel. I still wonder if she feels the same. Huh, what do you mean? Luffy asked confusingly. Naruto's face turned red as he rubbed the back of his head. You know, that I love her. Luffy however was still confused. What do you mean by you love her? Naruto's face faulted. What do you mean what do I mean? Well, do you love her like you love food? Naruto's face faulted. This guy, is dumber than Kiba. Now why would I think I mean food? He asked. Well, you love food, don't you? Luffy said. That's not what love is, you idiot. Naruto growled with his arms raised. Shish and Sakura calls me a baka. Although I do enjoy it. Luffy swallowed his food and looked at Naruto in confusion. So, what is love? Naruto was about to answer but stopped himself and realized he didn't have an answer. You know what? I don't know how to answer that. Suddenly they feel the boat rumbling. Naruto turns to Luffy who is still eating his meat. Luffy, was that your stomach? Luffy swallowed his meat and shook his head. No. Naruto gulped as did Yosaku and Sanji. They feel the sea rise and out came a large giant sea, cow. Yosaku screamed by looking at it while Naruto, Luffy and Sanji stares at it. What the hell is that? A cow? Asked Luffy. Not a cow. Cows don't swim. A hippo? It might be. Naruto said while holding onto to his chin. Whatever it is, Yosaku yelled. It's came from the Grand Line, and it's also after our food. Well, good thing we don't have ramen because I wouldn't give that up. Naruto joked. Sort of. However, Luffy disagrees as he twirls his arms. Gum gum. Pistol. Luffy shouts while delivering a punch to the sea cow, causing it to plummet into the water. Naruto's eyes jumped in shock and mouth dropped. H how did you do that? He asked. Luffy turns around and gives a smile. Humo. I'm made out of rubber. He stretches his mouth to show his new friend. Naruto sweet pounds. You know. I shouldn't be surprised by this. After all, I am in a new world. Suddenly the sea cow comes back. Yosaku walks away in fear. Oh great. He shouted fearfully. Now you've made him mad. You back for more. 
Luffy asked as he prepared to punch him again but was stopped by a kick from Sanji. Dumbass. There's no reason to punch this poor hungry hippo. She's probably just a baby and can't catch food for herself yet, huh? That right. Sanji said while Naruto and Yososaku stared at him. You're insane. They both said in unison. Sanji holds out the largest plate of piping hot meat out for Momu. Here you go. Eat up. Don't be scared. I won't hit you. The sea cow gazes at the blonde chef skeptically, but reassured by the chef's friendly demeanor and lack of aggression, he opens his mouth to take a bite. Sanji smirked then. Whack. Both Naruto and Yosaku eyes widen in shock. What the hell, Sanji? Naruto yelled out. It was going to eat me with the plate. What could I do? Sanji answers nonchalantly. Are you freaking serious? Naruto asked as he grabbed Sanji and shook his body. That monster could attack us right back. Naruto is proven to be right as the monster came roaring back Yosaku screamed while Naruto watched in fear. He was about to attack but was stopped by Sanji. Stand back, this is my show. He runs up to the sail and then jumps at the sea cow and kicks its neck. Naruto, Luffy and Yosaku stared in surprise as the sea cow faints. And that's that. Sanji smirked as he joined Luffy and Yosasuku. Naruto shook his head and sat down with his new friends. He looks over at the sea again. Sakura, no matter what happens. I will find you. Back at Kokoyashi village, Sakura was staring at the sea from the kitchen table. She was wiping away her tears after hearing what Nojiko told her about Nami. So, you came from a whirlpool on a boat during a mission, Nojiko asked while Nojiko poured a cup of tea and handed Sakura tangerines. Yeah. Dot and this girl came to save me and told me to come find you. Nojiko nodded and looked at a picture of Nami and Nojiko when they were children. She was about to explain her past but then they suddenly heard grumbling. They look up to see Usopp is waking up. He looks up to see two ladies sitting on the tables. Who are you? He asked as he was scratching his head. He then slapped his head. That's right. You're the one that hit me on the head. Just when I was gonna save you. Actually. Sakura pointed out. You have it backwards. She is the one who saved you. She's right, Nojiko said. If you had actually gone through with attacking that fishman you would have been killed for sure. Nojiko explains. Stupid outsider. They looked at the kid who is crying. But you'd figure a kid from here would already know better. Nojiko continues. The boy, hadn't touched his drink. Sakura noticed he had tear stains in his eyes. What could possibly make a child do something so reckless? I think that's a question we'd both like answer for. I know. I know but they hurt my daddy. Now he can't work and pay off Arlong's stupid fees. They were going to take everything from me. Those fishmen destroyed our town, hurt my friends. I had to make them pay for what they did, no matter what. Don't you get that? So, I went to Arlong Park by myself, but this girl stopped me from going in. Sakura felt bad for him so she walked over to comfort him. She's like an evil witch. I can't stand this. I have to avenge my father. I don't care if I die. Then die, Nojiko said. That surprised Sakura while Usopp spit out his tea. If you're truly prepared to die, then go. But you'd better understand boy, I stopped you. And this witch you hate kept you from carrying out your revenge. So far you've cheated death twice. She gets up from her chair and stalks towards the kitchen. Just finish your tea and go. How could you say that? Sakura asked. She stands up and glares at her. Is that what you say to a child who lost his father? Yeah, she's got a point. Usopp said. You're being a little rough on him, don't you think? Nojiko gives a sigh then turns to Usopp. I don't care who he is, if he wants to kill himself then so be it. He doesn't have what it takes to suffer for revenge. What? Sakura and Usopp asked in unison. It takes time. I suffer as well. Revenge is not an easy way to carve out. Sakura looks back at the boy who continues to cry. Revenge is no easy path for one to carve out. And to die, just because you're too foolish for patience, is nothing but a coward's plan. The boy sobbed some more. 
W. What do you want from me? He asked. He wiped his tears with Sakura patting his back. Do you still have your mother? Sakura asked. Why yes. The boy answered. Then go back home to her. Sakura said in an encouraging tone. She lost your father and it would break her heart to lose you too. The boy looked up at Sakura who smiled at him. He sniffed and smiled. Okay. The boy walks up and leaves the house to return to his mother. For chicks with tattoos and pink hair, you're actually really sweet. Usopp commented. Thanks. I think. Sakura said. However, Nojiko wasn't so grateful. Piss off. She said. Sakura glared at the owner of the house. Oh, right, Usopp said, as he remembered why he is here, my name is Captain Usopp. Nice to meet you, I'm Sakura. She greeted. Same here. Now, I'm looking for a girl named Nami. Nami. They both said. Usopp blinked in confusion. You know her? He asked. After hearing what Nojiko said, Usopp's jaw dropped. No way. She's a part of the Arlong crew. It certainly looks that way. Nojiko stated. Everybody here knows that cow. Even the little boy. It gets better, though. That cow is my sister. We grew up here. Well, technically, she's been my adopted sister since we were both orphans. Nojiko picked a picture that was on a table by the wall. But a sister's a sister, you know what I mean. I don't believe it. Usopp breathed out as he stood and looked about the home. Nami's house. It was mine, too. Nojiko points out. We were raised together in this house. She's the closest thing to family I have left since our foster mother died. The three of us used to be so happy together in Kokoyashi village. Sakura then sees a drawing of a compass and sailboat carved on a table. You're telling me that Nami betrayed her mother, her sister, and her whole village just to be a part of Arlong's crew. Yeah, pretty much. Nojiko answered with a bitter tone. Sakura noticed it. Usopp sat back down in either confusion or disgust. Maybe even both. Damn. Usopp said as he sat back on his chair. Nami is a total witch. She had us completely fooled the entire time. To think, she was just after the treasure for herself. Even after she risked her life to save my village. I don't understand. She seemed so happy with us. Nojiko turned to he. She was happy. And Nami saved my life from Arlong. Sakura told them. Usopp and Nojiko looked at her in confusion. She did. Asked Nojiko. Sakura nodded and told her what Nami said. Usopp strokes his chin. But even if she did save your life, why would she still work for Arlong? He asked. It doesn't make any sense. Especially since she helped save my village. Maybe she is trying to trick him or something. Sakura speculated. Yeah. Usopp's body suddenly stopped and slowly turned to Sakura in a fearful voice. What? Sakura. I just remembered that a shipmate of mine was taken prisoner before we got here. Sakura gasped. Usopp held his head. Oh. I'm in trouble. I hope he's not dead. I'll go with you, Sakura said. We'll find him. I wouldn't do that, Nojiko suggested. If the fishman finds Nami helped you escape, they will kill you and her. Sakura and Usopp gulped. She's right, Sakura said. Even if she is working for Arlong, I can't let her die too. I'll go, said Usopp. Maybe I can talk to Nami to help me save him. But before Sakura could protest, Usopp runs off. Sakura sighed and looked up. Quote, Naruto, are you in this world? Zoro wakes up to find himself in front of Arlong. Arlong glares at the swordsman and movies his head closer to his. Now, let me ask you one more time, what has your purpose in coming here to this island? Like I said before, I'm looking for a girl, you half-fish bastard. Zoro said with a glare. Hearing that made Arlong laugh. Wow. For someone I consider a good meal, you're either really stupid or ballsy. He says. Zoro growled. We fishmen are simply the next rung up the evolutionary ladder from you pathetic humans. We are incredibly resilient. We can breath underwater and on land, an ability which clearly establishes our physical superiority over you. 
Zoro growls as Arlong continues talking. I don't know if this will make any sense to that puny brain rolling around in your head, but fishmen are the lords of all creatures, and to fight against us is to defy nature. He then hears heels clicking. I'm really sick of listening to your big ideas, Arlong. Zoro widens his eyes he recognizes that voice. No, he whispered. The figure came out with an evil smirk. Arlong raised his arms. Why are you always so serious, Nami? You know that I wasn't talking about you. You are a very special human, our greatest navigator and a valued member of this crew. Always have been. It's too bad that pink-haired girl I fought died and you had to bury her. Arlong scowled. She would have been a powerful ally. Yeah, Nami said with a smirk. It's too bad she is buried at sea. Zoro's eyes widen. You killed an innocent girl. He yelled angrily. No, Arlong did. Nami said truthfully. And why did he call you his navigator? Zoro asked. You can't honestly expect me to believe you work for him. Hold on, is this guy a friend of yours, Nami? Arlong asked with a raised eyebrow. Don't be ridiculous. This is just another fool who thought I wasn't stealing his treasure right out from underneath his nose. She then crouches down. To think he followed me here knowing that just shows how stupid he is. So this is the person you really are. Zoro growled. All along I thought you couldn't stand pirates. You thought wrong. Nami grinned evilly. I guess you guys finally get it. I just used you guys to get what I wanted. You were skilled enough to serve my needs. But boy, are you guys a bunch of suckers. They both heard Arlong laugh. She had you guys completely fooled. He grinned. It's no use. She is cold-blooded. She betrayed their family for money so you really shouldn't feel too bad. Nami's eyes suddenly widened and Zoro noticed it. If I were you, I would just admit defeat and try to forget the day you met her. Zoro grinned. I don't need to. Zoro said making Nami look back at him smirking. Fine. Then why don't you just get out of here? I'm tired of your face. Nami said. Zoro smirked before diving into the nearby water, where he drowned due to his hands and legs being tied. Nami gasped as he lands into the water. She takes off her shoes and jumps in after him to pull him out of the water. Zoro took his breath for a few minutes before smirking. You're really just a girl who can't watch one guy die, so why don't you stop pretending? Nami's eyes twitched. You bastard. She yelled as she kicked his chest and she started kicking him until she was done. She then carries him and looks over at Arlong. I'll take him to the dungeon. Nami said. Then later I will deal with him. Arlong guffawed. Very well. He might be the right replacement for that pink-haired girl. Nami looked down. I hope Sakura got away from this. Arlong. A fishman called. Nami and Arlong turned around and. Yeah. Arlong turned around. Well spit it out. What is it? Yes sir. This guy didn't come here alone, the lantern fish man informed Arlong. There was another long nose weird looking guy with him but he got away. Nami gasped then grunted while Zoro growled. What the hell, Usopp? You left me for dead and got spotted. I think, I think he escaped into Kokoyashi village. The fish man told his boss. Arlong lets out his infamous evil smile. Kokoyashi, huh, that's perfect. Now I have two reasons to go. It's time to have some fun. Nami waited until they all left. Once it was just her and Zoro she then turns to him. Get out of here, quick, I am gonna find that girl with the pink hair. She told the green-haired swordsman who quirked an eyebrow. But I thought, she's still alive. Nami interrupted. Her name is Sakura. I'll find her and help her escape escape. Nami said. He sees her eyes and indicates she's telling the truth. Back at Kokoyashi village, a group of people gathered around to the town's sheriff named a man with a with a thick mustache and scars along his body, as well as stitches around his face. He wears a brown uniform with a matching shirt and shorts. On his head is a cap that matches his clothes with a pinwheel stuffed in the front. Hey, Arlong's coming. One villager said. He is questioned another one. We just paid him this month's tribute, didn't we? It's probably about my weapon stash they found. Genzo said, everyone go home. 
He heard a gasp. Genzo. The villager whispered. Another gasped and turned around. They're here. Arlong and the fishman walks closer to Genzo with some of the villagers watching from their house in fear. Nojiko brings Usopp, while Sakura stays at Nojiko's house, to the village and the latter's jaw drops. That's Arlong. Yep. Nojiko confirmed. Usopp's mouth started to quiver. Arlong's gigantic. He's not even human. Nope. He's a fishman. Nojiko said. For real. Usopp asked as they heard Arlong talk some more. I'm responsible for 20 towns and villages, including this one. And as your leader, I cannot tolerate even a little rebelliousness. Wiping out Gosa was just a small example of what can happen when you do not do as you are told. Tribute money must be paid no matter what. It's just what it sounds like. Nojiko said to him him. Money we pay him so we can stay alive. Adults and children, if there's even a single person who can't pay, then what happened to Gosa will happen to everyone in this village as well. She explained ruefully. Our town and the people in it will be wiped from existence. Usopp's face started to go pale. He destroyed an entire town because of one person. He asked. That's how Arlong rules, Nojiko stated. To them, we're nothing but a subspecies. Killing us has always been easy. You pathetic humans need to stop with all this thinking you're up to. Arlong said to Genzo. It's your greatest weakness. Arlong then grabs Genzo's neck. Usopp repeated, the Arlong Empire. As he finally understood Arlong's plan. They're planning to take over the entire East Blue. Genzo. Nojiko cried. She runs out of her hiding spot. You have absolutely no right to do this, Arlong. Nojiko told him, as Arlong turns his head around. We've paid your tribute without fail for over eight years. Why would we rebel against it now? Just think about it. It makes no sense. Now take your hands off Genzo. Yeah, it's not like he used the weapons. Yeah, let him go. Yeah, let Genzo go. Arlong released his neck. Hoarding weapons shows he was planning a rebellion against me. But on the other hand, Arlong grinned. I could destroy you all. Please try to protect your friend, so you don't give me an excuse to do that. Either way is fine, but rebellion will not be tolerated. Everybody, just go home. Genzo begged. Do you want to waste all of our work over the past eight years? For what? The time for you to give your lives for this village was back when they first came. Now we must continue to be patient. The most important thing is to continue to live. We swore we would not let them defeat us as long as we're alive. Well said, Arlong said, lifting Genzo in the air. I agree with you. It's good to know that even disgusting insects like you enjoy being alive. Arlong threw the village leader to the ground as Genzo hacked out some blood. There is no way any of you will ever come close to the perfection of the fishmen. Shahahaha. The villagers were about to attack but Genzo stopped him. Don't move. He begged. Your deaths will mean nothing. You must continue to be patient, even if I die. That's a good ending for you. Arlong chuckled. He picked Genzo up again. This time he was holding his body making everyone gasp. Pay close attention, humans. This is what happens to those who defy me. Even if it's just inside their tiny heads. Exploding star. A voice shouts as Arlong felt his body being shot at. It caused him to drop the Kokoyashi Sheriff. Nojiko sighed with relief. What was that? One of the fishmen asked. The townspeople who were relieved Genzo was all right were puzzled. Look, up there, there's someone on the roof. Someone pointed up at the rooftop to see Usopp holding a slingshot. Who the hell is that guy? I am, the great warrior of the sea. Captain Usopp. Usopp, whispered Nojiko, also known as the Demon King, Usopp, feared and hated by almost half the world. Usopp declared, I command thousands of men. Loyal ambitious men. That's the guy the first told you about. The one with the long nose. The one that got away. One of Arlong's henchmen declared. The smoke started clear as Arlong growled in anger. Bring on your thousand men. I'll crush them one by one. Usopp gasped in fear. Repulsive human. Arlong's eyes went red in anger. 
What can a creature like you do to me? Arlong lifts the house making Usopp gulp then he stumbles. Arlong. Hold on just a second. One of his fishmen said. After losing Gosa, we can't afford to kill off any more tribute money. His fishman with a hat agreed. Villages are fun to destroy but ruling over them makes us more money. But Arlong ignored them and pushed the house down and threw it to another house making the villagers gasp. He's destroying it all. Usopp. Nojiko cried fearing the worst for the long-nosed sniper but luckily, he jumped out to another house. Am I dead yet? He's not dead yet. A fishman called. Oh. Crap. Usopp screams and runs off with Arlong and the fishman chasing after him. Catch him and tear him apart. He ordered. The fishman all chased after him except for one and turned to the villagers. We'll be back soon. You can all live for now. He told them before he set off. Genzo sighed with relief but he started to stand up. Here, let me help you up. A man with sunglasses named Nako helped him up. He, Genzo and the rest of the town look at Arlong and his crew leaving. Later, Nako tended his wounds. I'm so sorry, everybody. Genzo said. This has all been my fault. What are you talking about? Nako asked. You're not a fish man, are you? But who was that guy who attacked? Nojiko was about to say but was interrupted by a familiar voice. Hello, everyone. It's good to be back home. It was Nami who greeted them. The villagers sneered and left them. However, Nojiko stayed behind while Genzo glared at the orange-haired girl. What's wrong? She asked. You never just come walking through Kokoyashi anymore. I heard a commotion. She said then looked at the destroyed houses. Arlong huh? She then walked closer to her sister. And I heard my friend visited you. Is she still here? Yeah. Nojiko confirmed. And I think she needs your help. Not too far along, the sea cow Sanji was now pulling their boat as Naruto covered his forever and smiled. Hey, there's a town. He cheered. Yeah. Luffy cheered. We're almost there. Naruto clenches his fist and watched up in determination. Sakura. I'm on my way. Hang in there. 